Hi everyone, here with Mitch Baker, the CMO of Drink. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're seeing here at the show. Uh, your, your booth greets people as soon as they walk in the door. Uh, and it's, ver it's really an intriguing concept you guys have built. Tell us a little bit about it. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so we built actually two separate brands, two separate concepts, Drink Coffee and Tea and Quench Juice Bar. And uh, Drink is a concept that caters to the coffee consumer, but we wanted to focus on that consumer that is expecting that level of speed and that level of service uh, of, of like the big green Starbucks, yet we wanted to give them the flavor of the higher end, better quality coffee and espresso and tea experience. And add in an even extra special bonus, which is an incredible food element, which typically is not seen in that category. And then our sister concept, Quench Juice Bar, is really a new take on, on, on what is today's juice bar experience and that's fresh products fresh juices all squeezed fresh in store uh, with uh, uh, Greek yogurts not ice creams or, or sherbets or frozen yogurts um, instead of supplements we use all superfoods we have an incredible acai bowl offering we're working on an amazing um, really healthy food offering and then the third piece of magic that we do is we give our franchise operators the opportunity to put the both together under one roof. So the customer really wins because they have the drink coffee and tea experience and the quench juice bar experience. It's a real winner. Using the word experience, uh, I know for a veteran marketing guy like yourself, is not an accidental word. Um, I think that's what helps set you apart is it is an experience for the consumer rather than just being a place uh, where you pick up a coffee in the morning. Uh, you're creating something more than just uh, drive through and pick up a cup of coffee, correct? Oh yeah, definitely. And I think what consumers want, especially the consumers that we target with the brands, more of the millennial audience, um, they want some of that experiential involvement when they go into, whether it's have their coffee, um, whether you're getting you know, your cold brew on a really cool tap system right in the front counter or on the coin side, all of the vegetables and, and produce gets misted every few minutes and then put into a produce bath right in front of them. So there's that experience that makes it sort of unique and special. Having the, the, the fresh, healthy element obviously has been uh, a buzzword, particularly in franchising, for a couple of years now, and it just seems it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, that attention to quality, that attention to freshness, uh, that attention to detail in the food and drink offerings, um, I think is, is almost a price of admission to play in that space these days. Um, how do you set yourselves apart as a brand um, to compete with those who are starting to pay more attention to quality now and maybe that didn't exist five or ten years ago? Well, one thing that's unique about our brands and our foundation is our CEO, Thomas uh, Nerryman, is a former franchisee of some incredible brands, Pinkberry, Johnny Rockets, Quiznos, to name a few. And, um, you know, we knew that we had to differentiate ourselves on so many different levels. And because of the experience that he has as a former franchisee, there's that element of freshness turning it out. So in other words, before something gets stale, let's look at a new way of presenting it. Let's switch it up. Yet, at the same time, still understanding what a franchisee wants because he's lived that world as a franchisee. So that's having that ability really gives us the opportunity to keep it fresh and different and stay relevant and stay active with those trends when fresh and organic. And, and you know, those are the important points that people are looking for. Taking uh, advantage of, of all of that and, and the growth potential that is there with both of those brands, where do you target now for both short-term and long-term growth? So we're definitely targeting domestic expansion. Um, we've got a really nice program for development right now. We've got a number of markets through the U.S. that are either in development, <coughs> excuse me, or are signed. Uh, we've actually just expanded to the Middle East, uh, so international is in our, in our sites. We just uh, actually closed the development of the entire GCC, and uh, uh, we've got a store under construction right now, in fact, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Um, we're really not harnessing ourselves into one area. Uh, we want to really throw a big, you know, wide blanket because we feel with the three offerings, either drink or quench or the combo store by itself, it opens up the wide opportunity to go into any market. 
We've got, of course, some minimums, you know, for point of entry. We don't want to let someone open in a, you know, decent-sized market with one location. We want them to set themselves up for success and, you know, start out with a number of stores. So, um, really, we're targeting, you know, the U.S. in a big way, certainly Southern California, which is our backyard. Um, and, you know, we, we just get an overwhelming amount of inquiry on a weekly basis for, for new prospects. Tapping into um, that successful multi-unit Z can really be a pretty difficult thing to do. Um, obviously, there's 500 brands in this room alone who are targeting a lot of the same multi-unit prospects. How do you stand apart um, and, and say, we're, we're the right thing to go with because there's such tremendous upside with our brand? So that's a really easy question to answer. So the simple part of it is that we have two incredible brands, but in all honesty, the big differentiator is the fact that the CEO of our company has lived their pain, has gone through their good times, their bad times, has put the money out of his pocket to buy a franchise when he's like, oh my God, how is it going to do? So having that experience as the leadership of your company, being in your same shoes really, I think, makes a difference and puts at ease a lot of the challenges or some of the questions, challenging questions, that a prospective franchisee who wants to become a multi-unit operator might have. It, it really makes that partnership between franchisor and franchisee that much tighter, I think, when the franchisor has understood what's uh, gone into someone who's poured their life's work into becoming a franchisee. Um, really, I think, presents an opportunity to set the brand apart. Yeah, most definitely. In fact, Thomas says all the time, it's like, you have no idea what it's like until you've actually done it, or you've taken that check and you've written it for $50,000. Yeah. Um, well, best of luck with moving uh, with everything moving forward, and we really appreciate your time, Mitch, and uh, look forward to seeing both of the concepts uh, on a street corner near, near us sometime soon. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you.